hello everybody welcome to another video on the channel today i'm going to be showing you how to draw 3d columns in autocad architecture it's a pretty simple process once you know what you want you can manipulate the tools to get exactly that so if that is something you're interested in then definitely stick around And if it's your first time on the channel, thank you for joining. I hope that you learned something new today. And if you did, definitely hit the like button and subscribe because that is how you're going to know when another video drops, especially if you hit the bell. <laughs> yeah, hit the bell. Let's go. All right, so here we are in AutoCAD architecture and let's get right into it. So the first thing you want to do when you're going to be creating a concrete column is to uh, determine and define the shape of your column profile. I feel like I repeated myself. <laughs> so on my screen, as you can see, I have a number of column profile. All right. And when we talk about profile, we're simply referring to the shape of the column when you slice it in the middle. Another term for that would be truncate. When you slice it in the middle, just like an orange or a cucumber, you slice it in the middle and there you have the profile of that fruit. Likewise with columns, when you slice it in two right across the middle there, you would get that shape. And that is what we call the profile. Now, in determining your profile, you have to make sure that you consider the the purpose of the column. If it's just there for looks or pretty looks, then uh, you know you can make it into whatever shape you want. But then, if that column has to bear load, um, then you might want to make sure that it is at a specific size and shape and all of that kind of stuff. All right, so you might need to do some calculations and make sure that the reinforcement that you need can actually fit within that column. So that aside, go ahead and draw the shape and size of your column to the exact dimensions that you need because once you create the column you cannot go back and change the shape it, it's going to remain the same or you might have to just do over the whole thing all right so let's pretend that we have all the shapes that we need here as you can see i have a variety we have the square rectangle round i have a t-shaped column here i also have a L shape and a 45 degree shape column over there. Also, I do have another square column here with a little bit more detail. As you can see, I have some wide notches on the side here. So you can imagine what those would actually look like. And I also have another one here, which is even more detailed. I have a lot more grooves going on here. And I also have a circular one that is similar over here where I just, you know, get some random notches in there and just created this shape. So you would just go ahead and use the regular line tools over here to draw the shape that you need. All right. The next thing you want to do is to make sure that your lines are all connected. As you can see, once I click on this object, it is all connected. How do you do that? Simply just highlight it all and type the command J and that would bring up our join tool and you click on it, everything would become joined together. So now that everything is joined and our profile is ready, let's go ahead and create a column. The command we're going to be using is called the custom column command. So simply type it in the command line or you can go up to your home tab here and come across to this drop down and it is right there. Click on it and now we need to pick the shape that we want. For this instance, I'm going to be clicking on the rectangle and right away it is asking for an insertion point. So I'm going to pick the center of the column as the insertion point. Usually I would pick the point that will be corresponding with the column grid if I'm going to be having column grids on that particular drawing. So I'm going to choose that point and here on we're going to give the column a name. So I usually name the column based on the size and shape. So in this case this would be a 12 inch square column. So I'm going to just put 12 square column and I'm going to erase the geometry and I'm going to hit OK. And just like that it looks like nothing much happened but it actually changed to a column. Let's rotate that in 3D view and see what that looks like. So this is what it looks like when 
when you create a column from a profile like that. Now, the difference between this command and the extrude command is that this object is now recognized as a structural member and not just a 3D object. All right, structural members in AutoCAD can relate to each other. They can connect to each other. And also like this column can also be connected to column grids and that kind of stuff. So as you can see, we have access to the various tools available to structural members as well as in the properties over here. We can also change the height of the column. Let's say we wanted it to be 10 feet high instead of 12. We would just do like that. You can see it made that change over here. Also, it creates a style for us, as we can see here in our properties here. And also, if we go over to our style browser underneath our structural columns drop down, we can see that it added it to our style properties. So whenever we need this column to use throughout our project, it would be available, right? Right there for us to use. So of course we would go ahead and do the same for all of these profile here and so that would look something like what I have over here. And that's what they would look like in 3D. Change that to shaded so we can kind of uh, orbit a little bit. What if we wanted to create more decorative columns though? Um, let's say columns that look something more like what I am about to show you here, like these two here. I'm actually going to isolate these so that we can focus on them. All right. So as you can see, these two columns are more decorative. You know, these columns have what we call a capital at the top, shaft in the middle, a base here and sometimes we add a pedestal to them and so how would we achieve a column like this and also making sure that it, it remains a structural member all right i'm going to be showing you how i go about doing these ones i'm going to go back to the top view i'm going to unhide everything else and i'm going to go to two so as you can see i i downloaded um some columns from the google you know blocks and stuff and i'm sure you'll be able to find these if you go and research so what i did really was to uh copy the edge profile of this column because that's what i'm going to be using so i copied that here of the capital at the top and i did the same thing at the base here making sure that i get up to halfway into the column so this column is one foot in diameter i would make sure that the width of this would be six inches across likewise up here so this would be six inches in all right and you want to make sure that you have both profiles here and you want to make sure that it's all connected into one shape just like we did with the profiles over here all right so the next thing I want to do is to create the shaft I would start with the shaft so the shaft as we know is one foot and it's a certain height I actually have a one foot round column already so what I'm gonna do is just copy this one and drop it over here and I'm gonna also copy these two shapes and paste them close by isolate these objects so now what we're going to do go into 3d view here i want to rotate these so that they are standing up rather than laying flat on the ground so i'm going to be using the 3d rotate option here so click on that and now we're able to rotate using the red axis as we can see here so let's click on it and now we're able to rotate like that um we're going to select the ortho mode Click on it like that and so now it is rotated upwards i'm going to do the same thing with this so go ahead click on it rotate along the x and drag it up just like that so now i have both of my edges all done i'm going to drag this to the top now the next thing you want to do is to go to your front view and i would say use this over here because this will change our uh coordinate system and make it so that we can manipulate these shapes so click on that so now we're able to move these anywhere we want so i'm going to move this to the dead center here making sure that it lines up neatly i'm going to do the same thing here drop that in the dead center there making sure that it lines up nicely from here what i am going to do is to split my screen in two so i'm going to go to view and make it so that i have two views i'm going to change this to top view 
So as you can see, these lines here are actually the shapes that we have there. So if I select them both, you'll notice they're both selected over there. What I want to do is to move them towards the center of the column. So let's go ahead and hit move and we're going to drag it from this point up. I'm going to use ortho. So we're moving it up and uh, we want it to be centered. So I'm going to kind of just track that point and hit right there. So now I know that these are in the center here while they're also in the correct position on this side. The next thing we're going to do is what we call a revolve. So click on this shape and we're going to type the command REV for revolve. I'm going to hit enter. And then the next thing we need to do is to pick the axis that we want to be our pivot point. So of course it's going to be from this point to this point. And now as you can see on that side we can basically uh, determine how much of a rotation we want it to make. We're going to type the angle 360 degrees because of course we want it to make a complete uh, revolution. All right. So just like that we're going to do the same thing down here. Uh, REV enter. Pick our two points and then we will type uh, the angle in which would be 360 and so now we have both capital and our base ready to go. So let's look at that in 3D what that looks like. So this is what it looks like and of course we're going to connect them up in a little bit. What if we wanted to add a pedestal to this? All right I'm going to just add a simple rectangular pedestal. So let's go back to the top view and from here what I'm going to do I'm going to use the box command right here and I'm going to place it in the middle but before we place it let us determine what size we want this pedestal to be so you know in this case I have two feet by two feet by three feet high I think I'm going to work with that and then you would just go ahead and place it where you want it right in the dead middle there and I'm going to give it a zero rotation all right so just like that it is being placed um it's not at the base so i need to make sure i change my elevation to zero and so that's what that looks like and then i need to move this up three feet so it sits perfectly on top of that and so now um now i have a column that looks something like that let's look at it in conceptual we're still having to deal with three to four different objects and that can be problematic. So how do we connect everything together so that it all becomes one structural member? What we would do is to click on the shaft itself, which would be the original column. And we would go up to where we see body modifier, click on that and we're going to add. Let's add that top piece there. Let's add the base as well as the pedestal. And we're going to hit enter and here we're going to make sure that the operation is additive and then we're going to erase selected objects and we're going to hit OK. And just like that we would have now added everything into one and it now it's one structural member. Now the only problem with this method is that if we were to change the height of the column, so let's say we increase the height of the column to 14 feet only the original column will move up and you will have to move these parts manually. So that's the downfall of this method. Um, so if you wanted to move this, what we would have to do is to go back to the body modifier tool and we say edit in place. So click on that and now we can literally move these things around. Right, so I'm gonna move this up two feet. And so now it is in the correct position. At the same time, I can go ahead and edit this if I wanted to drag this down, uh, let's say to 30 and move this probably six inches down and make whatever adjustments I need and hit finish. And now it's all good again, all good again. And so that is the easiest way to create custom columns. All right, guys, so here I have um, a an example of what these columns would look like if we were to actually add them to a drawing that we are doing. And so as you can see, I have a square column here, a little bit of decoration, you know, no problem. I actually have one of those round one as well, just for another option to show you how that would look on this particular building reload. And so there we go. All right, so 
which one do you think works best for this particular drawing drop your comments in the description but that is how i would go about adding columns to my drawings in autocad uh, if you liked it definitely hit the thumbs up if you uh, loved it then subscribe cool respect and manners okay so that wraps it up for this video i hope that you learned something don't forget to hit the like button uh drop your comments and if you haven't already a subscribe would be awesome big up the channel and make the thing grow i grow we are grow see me i say shout out to all my patrons on the page over there if you haven't check it out link in the description if you want to learn how to draw a foundation plan you can watch this video and if you want to learn specifically how to draw pad footing for columns like this one that we did today you can check this video out um it's all there check it out all right see you guys in the next video peace out